Dr. Ann Perfect. I am a functional medicine doctor trained as a naturopath. My training focuses a lot more on optimizing health, helping people not need their medications by working with various aspects of health, such as nutrition, lifestyle, stress management, and actually helping people improve their health so that they, in many cases, no longer need the medications that are prescribed in the U.S. today. Part of what we're doing is encouraging people with health through the Couch to 5K program. Have you heard of this program? I have many patients who've done it. I think it's actually a really fantastic program. We're not able to advise our runners on nutrition. So I was wondering if there are some foods that you'd recommend for a runner to incorporate into a daily diet. When someone starts a new exercise program, whether it's running or something else, we're really focusing in on is an anti-inflammatory diet. You know, the way to keep yourself healthy and free from injury as you do increase your exercise level is to make sure that you're getting the nutrition you need and not eating things that are actually making you more prone to injury. So this is about certain foods to incorporate, lots of leafy greens, lots of cruciferous vegetables, lots of brightly colored fruits and vegetables. These are the sources of all the micronutrients of various sorts that have such a positive anti-inflammatory effect on the body. And when people eat a lot of those, that helps them avoid so many of the foods that are pro-inflammatory, um, refined sugar, refined flour, the trans fat, an excessively high fat diet in general. All of these are pro-inflammatory and can actually make a person more prone to injury. The one place that I see people, especially people who are just starting out in a new program, get tripped up so often is the mindset that says, oh, I ran today. I can have that extra scoop of ice cream or I can have the ice cream or I can have the second helping with dinner. And that kind of mindset sabotages their progress. Some people find they gain weight when they start exercising because of that mindset. And of course, nobody likes that, even if they didn't go into it trying to lose weight. The general healthy diet that I already talked about, the whole foods with lots of vegetables and keeping, you know, very, keeping the amount of sugar and fine carbs very small, but not increasing their calories by a lot because unfortunately, we don't burn as many calories during a workout as we think we do. And it's really easy to actually eat even more than we've burned off during that workout. I was wondering if you had any special advice for people over 60 who are out there trying to keep fit and trying to keep out of the nursing home. The, the foundation is still the same. Lots of vegetables, keeping everything balanced. The older runner has to be a little bit more careful with protein. They may not be digesting foods as well. They may not. They may need to eat a little bit more protein to get the benefit of the protein that they are eating. They're more prone to losing muscle instead of building muscle. It doesn't mean people have to eat huge amounts of protein. And there are a lot of fad diets now that are advertising eating excessive amounts of protein, and that also can be dangerous for the older runner. There's a fantastic article, journal article, about how if exercise was a pill, it would be you know, advertised as the new super pill because it cures so many things, and it's true. The first thing I caution people with on all of these recovery drinks and workout foods is take all the hype with a big degree of skepticism because for the most part, what people need to do is eat a healthy diet. And most of those foods are highly processed foods. There's a lot of chemicals in them. And they actually can often cause as many problems as they can help. But they aren't necessary for most people. People don't need to really be thinking about eating or drinking anything other than water until they have been working out at a sustained hard level for over an hour. So if someone's doing interval workouts or they're doing short bursts of high intensity activity or they're doing a longer um, workout of a more moderate intensity, really all we need to do is stay hydrated. All those other foods and drinks are often just massively overpriced marketing. Really focus on that whole foods diet. Not working out in an empty stomach and, you know, planning to eat within an hour after, after working out is generally a good idea. People should be eating, you know, at least a small meal every four hours anyway. That is your very best post-workout recovery. I always struggle with a pre-workout. What should I eat the night before? And what should I eat for breakfast? Do you have any advice on that? The biggest advice is to experiment ahead of time. There's no one magic food that's the best thing to eat before a race. We want to stick within this whole foods diet. But some people um, are going to do better if they do have more carbs the night before 
or the, the morning of. Some people are not, actually. And you can experiment by testing different foods before your workouts. Um, your workouts aren't all that different from a race. The race is always somewhat more intense. Try different things. Try eating before, several hours before, eat, before working out. Try eating one hour before working out. Try eating something higher carb, something lower carb, and see how you feel during the workout. The day before a race isn't the time to change everything up. When you figure out what works for you, that's what you do day in and day out. And then, of course, that is what you do the day before the race and the day of the race. Should they be drinking anything special during a race? And if they're drinking water, how much should they be consuming? Because I've heard besides consuming too little, you can also consume too much. It, it is possible to consume too much, but that typically does not happen in the course of a 5K race. You just simply don't have time to consume too much during that length of race to actually be able to cause a problem. Now, if someone's doing an ultra marathon and only drinking water and not eating, there can definitely be problems. Even a regular marathon, that could be a problem. But in the course of a 5K race, a shorter race, with something that's under an hour, then that's typically not a problem. And for the same reason, people do not need electrolyte replacement drinks. It's just not long enough for people to be depleted. They need to be eating a regular healthy diet. They need to go in hydrated and well-nourished. And then the body is prepared to do that level of exertion. That's how a healthy body works. Depending on the heat level, more or less water may be needed. So little rules of thumb depends on the size of the person. It depends on the heat. It depends on the humidity. You know, if, if you feel thirsty, drink a lot of water. A 250-pound guy is going to need to drink substantially more water than a 100-pound woman. This is also something to think about during training. You shouldn't feel thirsty at the end of a workout. If you do, try drinking more during a workout and get a sense of how much you do need to drink during a workout so that you don't feel thirsty at the end. A lot of people are coming into the Couch to 5K with a significant amount of weight to lose. Do you have any advice for a safe way to lose weight? A moderate pace of weight loss so that it stays easy to maintain that. If someone's looking to lose weight, needs to lose weight, the target um, pace is about one to two pounds a week. Anything more than two pounds a week is really too fast. The key here is to stick with it. This is a race that the tortoise always wins. See, I've got a little elevator sound bite that's good for people to keep in their heads. Eat more mindfully and not eat without thinking about it. Pay attention to what you put in your mouth and don't eat without thinking about it. Use smaller plates. Don't ever eat anything that's not on a plate. If you're going to have ice cream, put a scoop of ice cream in the bowl. Don't ever just start eating it from the tub. If you're going to have a potato chip, don't just grab a handful. Put them in a little bowl and put the bag away. When you're done, you're done. Don't eat with your hands. Eat with a fork. So that takes away some of the worst junk foods and the things we tend to munch on mindlessly. Eat with a fork. You pay more attention to what you're doing. My healthiest patients are not those who eat well but are sedentary. It's the people who are very active and eat at least moderately well. And you don't have to be perfect on either one. It's about finding that moderate balance and that's really what works for people. So keep up the good work if you started one of these programs. The Couch to 5K is a fantastic one. I want to encourage everyone who is doing it. The more movement we do, the better. And I, I have a few people who might actually be over-exercising, but that's not most of us. Most of us have too many things to do in front of the computer and the TV and all these things, and we need to get out and move more and get up and move more throughout the day, get outside and get our heart rate up. That has additional benefits to just getting up and about throughout the day, but it's also not that every time we get up and move around, we have to go for a power walk or a power run. Just getting up and walking five minutes in the middle of the day or every hour makes a big difference in your total steps for the day and your fitness level. All these different kinds of, of activity pay off. Thank you so much for spending the time with me today. I so appreciate your time. I know how busy you are. 